In our Reformation series up until this point, we've looked at two people who argued that the Bible carried more weight than anything that the Pope said. According to Luther and Zwingli, the Bible was the Word of God, and the Pope's words just weren't. And so the Reformation began as a campaign to reclaim the Bible as the sole Word of God. Now, there were a few people in Europe who liked the start of this message. They liked that Zwingli was calling out the corrupt church, and they liked that Luther was willing to risk his own life to defy the Catholic Church, but they weren't that content to say that God can only be known through his Bible. A new wave of so-called reformers emerged saying that God had spoken to them not through any part of the Bible, but through dreams and visions and suffering. The Bible wasn't wrong, but it was just old news, and it wasn't the way that God spoke to people in medieval Europe. Today we're going to begin our two-part series on the Anabaptists, and we're going to see what happens when some reformers began to abandon all authority, both the Pope, but then the Bible too. I'm talking about peasants warring against the government, peasants becoming kings, and these new kings taking 16 wives at once, all because God told them to do it. And so if we're to find out how the Reformation goes from saying the Bible is the sole word of God, to the Reformation being about God telling people to apparently take 16 wives, we need to understand the guys who started the movement. And today we're going to meet our first Anabaptist, Thomas Munzer. Hello there. Okay, so we're going to begin with a word that pops up a lot when studying the Reformation, the Anabaptist movement. Now, in the technical sense of the word, the Anabaptists were a group of people who simply believed that people should be rebaptized as adults and that their baptism as children did not count because they were not old enough to make a decision to have faith in God. In ancient Greek, Anna meant re, so Anabaptists were simply people who got re-baptized. And so today, Baptist churches baptize people as adults rather than as infants, but Baptist churches do not take their tradition from the Anabaptists. Instead, they came out of Anglican churches 100 years later in the 1600s. So technically, Anabaptists meant to be re-baptized, but more realistically, the word is usually used to mean a radical reformer, who beliefs were a lot more extreme than the first wave of reformers like Luther and Zwingli. Now, to understand what exactly is meant by the word radical reformer, we need to meet our first Anabaptist, and it's this guy here called Thomas Munzer. Oh, no. Now, Munzer was a German preacher who really got behind the start of Luther's movement. He was a big Luther fan and loved that old Martin had the guts to oppose the Catholic Church, but Munzer also felt that Luther didn't go far enough with his push for reform. And as Munzer continued to preach, he revealed a few key differences in his beliefs to Luther's. I mean, firstly, Munzer taught that the Bible was just documented evidence of God speaking to his people, and so then Paul's letter to the Romans was a way of Paul writing down what God had said to him, and he believed that God worked the same way in 1520, and that if he just wrote down what God had said to him, then that would be equal to the Bible. And so Munzer taught that God speaks to his people in dreams, in visions, and through experiencing suffering, and that what Munzer learned about God from these things that he had experienced himself was actually God's word to his people, and therefore equal to the Bible. So Munzer taught that you could actually get to know God through spiritual experience, rather than just through his Bible. Secondly, Munzer taught that in order to fear God, people shouldn't fear other people. And as he fleshed out this idea, it had some pretty intense consequences. Munzer taught that fearing the German government was showing a lack of fear for God, and that it was okay or even the godly thing to do to disobey the government. He then went on to say that people should share power equally, and that there should not be one emperor to tell the German people what they can and cannot do. Now this really puts a rebellious spirit into many peasants. Finally, Munzer taught the Germans that they were living in the end times, and that Jesus was about to come back to judge the wicked people. He taught his followers that they were the true Christians who Jesus would use to play an important role in judging the wicked for their evil. And so peasants listened to this, and guess who they equated the evil ones who were to be judged at the end times to be? That's right, Charles V and his government. And so Munzer's words fired up many Germans to be ready to fight against the government and play a role in bringing judgment against the wicked. All Germany needed was a match to be lit. And that match came in 1524, when a bad harvest in Württemberg meant that there would be little food for the peasants. A group of 1200 peasants gathered and had a list of grievances that were inspired by the Anabaptist message. They argued that serfdom was evil and unbiblical, that power should be split evenly and that taxes shouldn't be paid to the church. And when their demands were ignored, riots broke out. 
And as other towns in Germany heard about these riots, they too broke out into violence and peasants' insurgency against the German government began and the German peasants' war was on. As the war heated up and moved on into 1525, another significant German was forced to comment on the situation. Even though Charles V had literally ordered Luther's execution four years earlier, Luther weighed in on the government side and condemned the peasants saying, You nobles are not fighting against Christians. For Christians would not oppose you, but would suffer all. You are fighting against robbers and blasphemers of Christ's name. Those that die among them shall be eternally damned. Now, for obvious reasons, the peasants lost the war. They started off as a set of separate rebellions. They lacked clear central command that the government had with the emperor. They had no resources like weapons or cannon fire. And they also had never fought in a war before. And they were fighting against trained soldiers. Munzer was actually captured and was made an example of as he was tortured and executed by the Germans. The government was clear. No one was to rebel again. But though Germany was restored to order, a Dutchman watched on and was inspired to one day take his own stand against the Holy Roman Empire. However, as we'll find out next time, his reign was to be far more bloody than Emperor Charles's Catholics had ever been. Meet Jan of Leiden. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss anything, and make sure to like this video. The more traction these videos get, the more I can resource them and boost production value, so please like this and share with your friends. I'll catch you next time for our next venture into a fascinating part of history.